Hey my amazing people, Hamza here and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to take you through the new Flexbox container feature that is coming to Elementor. When the Flexbox container is finally released in Elementor, we will not be using any more the columns and sections, but instead we will be using containers. And the containers actually give us more possibilities to create better websites alongside increasing the performance and increasing the amount of code that is going to be loading on our web pages. Now, as of making this video, the Flexbox container was released in the alpha version of Elementor 3.6. And that means that to experiment with it, we have to enable it in the Elementor experiments. And that's what we are going to do. But if you watch this video after the Flexbox container is released officially, then your existing pages in Elementor that you built using the columns and sections will be giving you an option to convert those sections to containers. Now the reason I'm making this video is actually to show you that converting these sections to containers is not the best practice. But instead you should be recreating these sections step by step in Elementor as that will give you even more possibilities and improve your web page scores just like I'm going to show you in this video. Now the page you're looking at over here was created using sections and columns in Elementor. Just like you see over here in the editor, the header was built using a section having one, two, three columns. The second section also was built using a section and having a column inside and another column inside and another column inside. Same with this, main section, a column, and many other columns inside. Now with the Flexbox container, we have the possibility to eliminate most of these columns and that will increase our page performance and obviously our page load. All right, now let's get started. And we are going to recreate this same page using the Flexbox container for Elementor. For the interest of time, we are going to duplicate this same exact page, which was built using sections and columns in Elementor, and we are going to recreate it using the Flexbox container. I'll name it as New Flex. Right, so now we have two same pages. So before we actually start converting these pages into the flex container, let's first use the feature that Elementor is giving us, which enables us to simply just say convert the sections. There is one on the section level. When you select a section that was made using a section, you have this option called convert to container. The same for all the other sections. Or you can actually just come over here to the settings option, and then you have the option to convert the whole page to containers. Let's try to do this. Great. Now we have converted all the sections to containers. So what Elementor has done over here is to create a container out of every section. Like this is the section. Now we have a container. This is the section. Now we have a container. Now we have another section. And now there is a container. But the problem with this practice, Elementor is going to again keep creating or recreating containers within the container because it is trying to replace a column that was previously there. For example, in this case, but if you had taken the initiative to recreate this section using the container, you may, you may end up actually using only the main container and just position your text within this container, just like I'm going to show you in this video. So that's why I'm against the practice of simply converting to containers because Elementor is simply going to recreate everything by replacing the columns with containers. Yet you would have taken advantage of the new Elementor Flexbox CSS features to position, align, transform elements. Now let me delete all the containers that were created by Elementor. Remove that. I'll delete this container. I'll delete this as well and also delete the very last container. Now I'm going to recreate each and every section over here using the container for Elementor. Add a new container. Now you realize that the structures have actually changed from the initial section layouts that were a little bit limited, but now we're even getting more flexible layouts in Elementor. So for example, this container will be in the column direction. This will be in the row direction. This will be two containers, but one is taking a bigger percentage, just like we've been using in the sections and all these other layouts, which are actually interesting to look at. However, if you're not using the add new section feature here, 
add a new container and then drag your container to your container area and there you have the one column container i can start by adding or dragging my widgets into the container just like this or i can simply copy a widget and then paste it into my new container so I'll say paste i'll delete this what i don't need i'll copy my navigation widget paste it into my container same for the call to action button. Now you see that we have three widgets in our container without actually having to add columns, just like it was up here before. And besides that, we can align our container elements either in a row direction or in a column direction. So for example, with my container selected, I can come to the items option and I can choose the container direction. So for example, if I say column direction, you see now elements are going to be aligned on top of each other. The first one, second one, and the third one taking over the very last section. I can choose to reverse the row to move from the very last item that was in the row to come first and the other items follow. Or I can choose to reverse the column so that the button now is coming first the navigation and the logo. I'll now choose to use the row direction and there we go. We can either drag our logo and reduce its size just like we were doing before with the column or we can come over here to justify our content either at the flex start, flex center, flex end or we can even space those items in between. We can space around or we can simply space evenly. I'll select this to be the flex between or the space between. Now when you look over here on our navigation, it's actually aligned at the top. Now we want to align our items to be in the middle of the container. So with our container selected, we're going to come over here to align items to be in the center. That is the vertical center. Awesome. But before we leave this over here, I want to show you some other feature whereby you can make custom changes to each individual item over here. For example, when I select the logo and I come to advanced options, there is something called the align cell. I can align this individual item to the start of the flex, to the center, or to the end of the flex. I can choose to change the order to either make this individual item to go at the end of the flex or the container or to move it back and be the start. The same applies to every individual item in here. For example, if I select the navigation, advanced, I can order it to go to the start or to the end, something like that. If I go to the size option, I can choose to grow my navigation, just like that. That is so sweet, because now it's going to use up the whole space from the start over here and use up this whole space up to where the button is starting. We can choose as well to shrink this navigation and that will maintain its original size. So I'll leave it to actually grow it. So here it looks way better. Now, when we go into the responsive settings of this navigation, come to the tablet option. This is how it looks like. Of course, you can make more other changes. Like for example, on the tablet device, and you want that this specific navigation comes at the end of the flex or the container. Now let's do the same changes over here on the mobile. Initially, the button is hidden on the mobile, and that is also now applying to our new button because it's getting the same style from the initial style. Now let's work on our header. I'll select my logo, and I can simply drag and resize my logo size. Now we have our button hidden and it will not be appearing on the mobile device. Awesome. And as well, you we can make specific changes for this navigation. But for now, it looks great. Let's go back to our desktop version. I want you to witness that we've actually used less columns in this container. So it's basically the container itself, and we've added all our widgets with the styling that we want. And that's all. Unlike the first section, where we had to add more columns, and again have to style this individual item right within the columns to suit our needs which is a little bit cumbersome. But now this actually gives us a better way to actually create better websites and designs. Right now, I'm going to delete the first section. Now we only have our container. I'll publish for now to update. 
We are now going to recreate our first hero section using the Elementor container. So in this case, I'm going to add a new container and it's going to be in the row direction. Great. I'll add a heading widget or I can simply copy these two headings and I'll paste. Now I have the two headings. I'll delete this over here. Now let me first add my background color and also add my background image. So I'll come over here to the widgets area, grab my container. And I'm going to drag these widgets into this container. I'll select now my container. And I'm going to give that container a background image. With the container selected under style, background type. Select my background image and insert it over there. Attachment will be center left and it is going to be cover. With my container selected, I'll come to advanced. I'll unlink the padding. And at the top, I'm going to add a padding of 212. Right, I'm going to add a padding of 70. And bottom, I'm going to add a padding of 107 177 we're going to add some padding to the main container so we're going to select the container itself great so by adding our padding to the section of uh, 40 pixels and 40 pixels at the bottom so we have this effect over right here so now you realize that we have the first container let me actually name this hero one hero one container and that hero one container has another container inside it and you can take this as the inner section in the previous way we've been building websites with elementor with our inner container selected we come over here to the layout option and under the items option we, we can choose the direction of our items for example if you want them to be in a row so they will be in this form so the first item next item and then the next other item in the row if you want them to be in a column, then they will be in this kind of format whereby every other item will follow up on that item. If we want to reverse, we can reverse and, and they will be running in the reverse order. In this case, I'm going to make it to be in the column direction. And I want that this text over here is actually coming first in our column, just like that. So back to our container items. First thing I'm going to do over here is to break our title. So I'm going to select the text and I'll break it using an HTML break tag. Now I'm going to select my container, position each individual item over here to be to this empty area of our container so that it's not overlapping any of the items in the image. We are going to select the individual element in the container and we are going to add some margin to this element. I'll unlink the margin and make sure that I'm selected in pixels and I'll add a 550 margin and the transform text with it selected. With the margin unlinked, I'll add a margin of 700 and I'll add some margin at the top over here so that we can have more space in between the two widgets. I'll make it like a 16 or I'll make it a 16. And now that looks so far so good. Now we are done creating our first hero section. And now we'll position our elements where we want them to be in our container without adding any extra column right within the inner section or within the inner container. So let me look into the responsive settings. I'll select our first heading widget and link this. And I'm going to add a margin of 70 on the right. And for the next one, and for the next heading widget, I'm going to simply reduce on the font size. So under content, actually under style instead of room of five i'm going to make it like 4.1 that's how our first hero container looks like on the tablet now on the mobile i'll let everything to be in the center but i'll select this transform text widget under typography i'll make it like about 2.4 i can as well increase on the letter spacing right now we are done creating our first hero container having all our elements and widgets. Now in the hero section we had before using the elementor sections, we had the main section, then we had the column, and then we had another inner column or inner section. 
and then we, inside the inner section we had to add two columns and then we had to add this other text in the second column so we have reduced our main container by three extra elements from Elementor beautiful now I'm going to delete this to replace the second hero container in this case we don't have to call it any further a section so we have to go with a new term container I'm going to add my container over here this image is basically having a negative margin and floating into the first hero section so don't mind about that for now or what I'm going to do is select this image and come to advanced and remove the negative margin so we can have a better view of the container this is going to be a two container container interesting because it has two containers and it's inside a container and we are going to give this a background color select the container style background background color we give it our color code now when you look over in this section we are actually having a first inner section and that inner section is having two columns and the same over right here so in this case we are going to simply add two containers and each container is going to hold two items of this kind so what I'm going to do is come to our widgets add a container and I'm going to duplicate that container so we have two containers now inside these two containers we're going to add our widget which is actually an icon box so I'll simply just copy this paste it into our container also copy this and paste it into our container as well copy the other two as well and the very last one and these I'm pasting in the second container so now with our first container selected which is this container we're going to use some magic that is coming from the flexbox css and this is actually selecting that the two instead of them running in the column direction they should run in a row direction so i'm going to come now to the items and for the direction i'm going to choose to run in a row direction and voila now we have these in two columns the same i'll do for the other container items row direction now in the second container we are going to add our two widgets this image widget and this text widget to do that i'm going to first of all come here to my widgets and drag grab my image widget i'll select my image there comes my image widget now i'm going to i'm going to give it a negative margin on the right hand side with the image widget selected under advanced right hand side i will give it a margin of 50 negative and on the left hand side i'm going to give it a 60 so we create this space here and then we're going to add a top margin that is going to push this image to come and appear just like the text is sitting on the image up over here so i'm going to add 185 but negative and there we go so we have our text kind of sitting on the image now I'll select this container and I'll give it a background color which is this background color so just get the background color code my container selected under style background type background color now you see we have something a little familiar to this now let's add our text which is this text over here so I'll just copy this text widget copy and I'll paste it into this container I'll give this text a padding so with the text widget selected under advanced I'll give it a padding on the right hand side of 50 and on the left hand side of 50 not percentage but pixels and as well add a bottom padding for this container of 50 pixels so under advanced and link at the bottom padding of 50 pixels so that we have some extra space down below here now when you look into our container things don't look like to be aligned together so what i'm going to do is select this container holding our text widgets or our icon boxes 
So come over here. This container. I'll come to the items and I'll justify the content to be in the center of the container. Now let's look into the responsive settings of this container. So I'll come here to the responsive mode, select my tablet. Yep, now we have to do some work over here. I'll select the image widget, come to advanced, unlink first of all. I'll move it to the top about 50 pixels. Left hand side, I'll give it about 30. With my container selected, I'll reduce a bit the padding at the bottom. I'll select the second container and I'm going to add some padding for the content. A 30 looks good. And also, I'm going to select the, the icon box itself, reduce on the spacing. 14 looks good. Content for the title, I'll reduce also on the size of the title itself. And for the typography of the content, I'll also reduce a bit. Also reduce a bit on the icon size. 25 would look good. So I'll copy this style. Copy. And I'll paste the style to all the others. I'll update to have a preview. I reload this page so I can have a clear preview of this section. Sorry, container. Back to our responsive mode, tablet. Okay, this looks good. Let me first reduce on the size of this text. The 12 also looks good here. Select the container and advanced. So far, so good. I should mention that the containers have also responsive settings for each individual device. So in this case, if I select this container, you realize that it's giving us the responsive mode as well for tablet, mobile, and even when you add more additional breakpoints, they'll be appearing over right here. Even when you go to align the items right inside the containers, you have the responsive options. You'll have to do the same for the mobile device, just for the interest of time. I'll go back to create the third hero section. So now let me delete this. But before I delete, let me show you what we actually saved. Here we actually had to have two inner sections, the first one and the second inner section. And then we actually have to create two columns to basically hold the icon boxes. So this is a huge saving since we are only using two containers to hold our content without having to add two inner sections and again four other columns. Now I'll delete this. Now let's go and repeat the very last hero section. I'll add a new container and it's going to be a two container container. It's going to be boxed and you'll have a background color, but we are going to use a gradient. I'll select the container style. Background type is going to be a gradient. I'll give the second color a color code or our color code. And the first one is going to be simply white. 50 and this will be at 35 as the location. I'll make the angle to be 270. I'm going to simply copy my widgets into the container. So I'll copy this. And I'll paste into the container. And I'll also copy my image widget. Copy. Come to my container. I'll paste the widget. Great. Same I'll do for the other widgets. I'll select this second container under uh, advanced padding on unlink, and I'll add a padding on the left hand side of 80 with the second container still selected under layout items. I'll space. I'll just find the items to be in the center. With a second container selected and advanced, I'll unlink the padding and I'll add a padding of top 100. Right hand side, I'm going to add the padding of 80. And bottom, I'm going to add a padding of 100 as well. To make our divider overlap over the image, with the image selected and advanced, I'll add a margin. Of about 20 but negative great looks like we are done recreating our last hero section okay now I'll let this section because we no longer need it we have recreated it using a container now if we are to look into the responsive settings you can just go ahead and make the necessary changes to reflect in your design you may simply publish or update if you haven't already now let's go and preview the changes with a new flex 
So looking at the two versions, the one before and the one after, oh, I think I have to add some padding to the one after here. Already added it here, 40 padding across the whole main container. So 40, 40, I'll update, go to the preview. Great, now we have our padding on the main container holding our content. Now, when we look into both the one before and the one after, nothing has changed from the design perspective. And up to the very last section or container. Now, let's look at this from the performance perspective. I'm going to come over here to the page before. I'll right click and come to view page source. I'll do the same to the new page created using containers, view page source, the one that actually uses the Elementor sections and columns. When you look into the generated HTML page, it has 690 lines of HTML. This is the HTML generated from that page. Now, when we go to the new flex, or the new page that we've created with the Elementor, flex container now when we scroll down below here and look at the number of html lines that have been generated we have barely 600 lines of html now this is about 100 lines of html reduced from the initial page that we had created using the old version of elementor of course that is now proof that we have improve our page performance in terms of how much code is generated or that is going to be running at the back end of our website. So that is another plus for the Flexbox container besides giving us even more layout and customization features. All right, so here is a film strip comparison of the two pages that we have created. And one, the one before Flex and the one with the Flex. Besides the visually complete timings for our design with the Flex taking a bit longer, and the last visual change also taking a bit longer for our design with the flex. All the other components are actually in our favor. Look at the time loaded, it is lesser. Fully time loaded, it is lesser. The DOM content loaded here, it's a little bit more, but the time here is not that significant. The speed index, actually our page with the flex performs way better. And time to first byte, our page with the flex performs way better. Uh, the visually complete feature at 85, our page still performs better, and at 99, also still performs better. And if you look into the first meaningful paint, still our page with the flex performs way better, and also the largest content full paint, our page with the flex still performs way better. So it looks like our page with the flex actually wins in terms of performance and timings, and also the visual possibilities to create websites using the Elementor container. Alright, that is all from me regarding the Elementor new Flexbox container, which I think is something you guys should try out. If you found this video helpful to you, please give it a like. Share it with a friend whom you think will like it as well or will find it meaningful or helpful to them. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Please have a good time and goodbye.